Welcome to Switched On Thinking, a podcast that explores the real-world networking challenges faced by businesses of today and the future. Twice a month, we deliver insightful and informative analysis of the key role that networking technology plays in driving business success and ensuring business continuity. Switched On Thinking is brought to you by Netgear, delivering innovative networking solutions you can count on so you can spend more time on what matters most, growing your business. Now, here's your host, acclaimed author and tech columnist, Neil C. Hughes. On this podcast, we've talked all about the shiny side of technology that excites consumers and businesses alike. But today, I want to take a peek behind the curtain again and look at the technology that brings to life the digital experiences that we take for granted in theatres, lobbies, music venues, and so much more. And I am, of course, talking about things like switches, AV over IP and audio over IP. And whether you're an IT engineer, AV engineer, a reseller or someone just interested in the technology that makes all those digital experiences look and sound better, you are in for a treat today. Well, I say today because there are so many valuable insights in our conversation rather than edit anything out. We've split the interview into two parts, and I'll explain more later. But we have so much to get through today in part one of the conversation. So let's dive straight into that interview now. So welcome to the Switched On Thinking podcast, guys. Can you tell the listeners a little bit more about your role at Netgear and the kind of problems that you're solving with technology? Hey, Neil, thank you. I'm Laurent. I'm the uh, Director of Product Management for the Manit Switches, and uh, at the same time, I'm responsible for the Pro AV market in general and the, the Netgear Pro AV engineering services team too. So we're helping AV customers, you know, throughout their projects with the networking side of things. So it's interesting that uh, you quite naturally, uh, you know, asking us what kind of problems, you know, we are, we are solving because it means we probably did a good job, you know, over the years with our mission statement. We, we are here at Netgear to facilitate the transition from the legacy circuit base to the EV over IP. And uh, we are not here to complexify it. So that's good that now people and the AV customers, you know, can recognize that we want the opposite. We want to simplify this uh, EV over IP solution. And, you know, IP has always been a threat, a problem for the AV professionals. So what we are doing at Netgear is that, well, we are working tirelessly to enhance the networking technology, so the software, but our professional services too, in order to allow for, for AV over IP. And that's really much any kind of AV over IP from the best of the best 10 gig SDVOE video over IP to the to the more widely adopted 1G codecs, you know, for videos such as NVX, AMX, uh, Q6, Xtron, NDI, Dante, ZV, Aurora, all, all these. And of course, uh, all, all the way to the audio world, you know, with AVB, Dante, QLAN, Q6, AES67. So, you know what we are doing? Well, we make it work. Just that. That's, that's what we want to do. And, uh, well, uh, as if it was natural, you know, an expected thing. And, uh, Neil, uh, I believe that's why you invited us today, because we have big news to announce with a new line of AV switchers for one gig. But uh, I'll wait before discussing it. <laughs> no, I'm excited to delve into that. And it's so refreshing to talk about solving real problems with technology as well. And most of the business leaders that I get to talk with, one of the most frequently used lines that they open with is, I just want it to work. So I think it's such a valuable topic. But uh, and John, we have you on the line too, and I believe you're the first Emmy Award winning guest on the podcast. So can you tell me a little bit more about your role at Netgear too? Thanks, Neil. I'm happy to be here. Yep. The AV kind of speaks to me uh, as my past and the Emmy uh, shows that embodiment of my AV past. So I'm an AV guy. I spent many years in broadcast television and video post-production had lots of different roles and was fortunate enough to be part of the uh, NBC sports team in the Athens Olympics way back in 2004 that won an Emmy. So I bring that AV side to Netgear, which shows its commitment to the AV community. And we will hired some people like myself to kind of make sure we build the right products and can talk about it in the right way and understand the problems. And I think that's showing its um, worth right now in the marketplace. 
Excellent. Well, welcome to both of you. And if you've not heard any of the podcast episodes before, we often talk on this podcast about the end user experience. But today, I want to try and take a look under the hood at the tech that enables AV engineers to bring to life those digital experiences that many of us possibly take for granted in theatres, lobbies and music venues. And now I'm, of course, talking about switches, AV over IP and audio over, over IP. So to begin with, can you set the scene and tell me a little bit more about the difference between the AV world and the IT world and why the AV engineer has a very different set of needs? Because I think there has been a communication problem between those two worlds in the past. Is that something that you've seen? Yeah, I think as the AV guy, I can start out and Laurent can fill in for sure. Um, for years, a lot of the AV is you plug cables in and you set some... some uh, switches here and there and it works pretty well. It's really simple. Uh, as we switched over to IP, of course, there's a network switch involved and networks have packets and different protocols and different uh, interfaces and different things to set up that we're not used to. Uh, and and as, I, as I often say, I'm a pretty smart guy, I think, but a lot of this stuff was really new to me and I don't know how to go set up IGMP exactly or the query or what a query is at first. I didn't know all these things. So this is all new to people. Uh, so the AV engineers have to learn a whole different language, first of all, just terms and and uh, and concepts. But then also they have to go into the interface and try to find out where all these things are. Uh, and you're digging through menus. We've all done that with different software applications. It's difficult. And you want to be able to make this thing run quick. And you're on a site somewhere and you've got the client breathing down your neck and you're trying to get this thing up and running. Sometimes you have a couple of days and that's it. Uh, so we really need to make things easier. And I know as the AV person... That has not been easy. Uh, I think that's where Netgear has stepped in. And, and Laurent, being more of the IT side, understands all those things and can help kind of package those up for people. So we've done a good job with that. And these two worlds, of course, are very different. And it's important to remember that there is so much more than just software and hardware because it only takes the mistake of one person to ruin an entire project. So can you tell me a little bit more about the legacy issues and how to dis traditionally it was the, the switch that typically got blamed when things go wrong? Because, hey, if the switch fails, the whole system goes. Isn't that right? <laughs> well, the legacy issues. I mean, so, Neil, how much time we have for it today? <laughs> I guess <laughs> not the whole day, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so best best would be, you know, maybe to ask the system installers, the AV integration firms, the consultants, and even the IT teams trying, you know, despite they have no clue whatsoever about all that to support them. So, well, look, at the end, this is either a point-to-point -point or a matrix system distribution, right? With audio or with video or with both audio and video. So when it does not work properly, well, you get no audio or you get no video. And, and when you get there, finally, finding the way it starts streaming some audio and some video, uh, you have this long possible series of uh, artifacts, you know, audio distortion, video interruptions, delays, all these things that, as you just said, can ruin the entire installation. And that's miserable. Very irritating for, for AV installers, I can tell you. And uh, especially when you know how far this audio quality, I mean, the, the quality of the displays, the beauty of these sources, they have come to. So when there's something wrong, well, this is almost always the IP fault, right? AV or IP, ah, IP doesn't work. And that's true. I mean, it might very well be. And it's that that's the case very often. But to finish on this, I can say that when we at Netgear, with the Pro AV Engineering Services team, we we uh, get in there either remotely or physically, and we clear out everything from the switches. Very often, you'd be surprised, Neil, that the cabling and the infrastructure that plays a big role too. And uh, you know, for instance, 4K HDR that requires HDMI 2.0A cables, right? And yeah. That should be, but it's not always commissioned this way. <laughs> so that's terrible. AV is so complex, but that's part of our roles too. Sometimes, you know, to debug the interoperability issues on site. Yeah. To add on to that is the, the network switch is the same central component that the legacy systems had with a matrix switcher. And we use a switch and switcher terms a lot. And it's really that fine point of we're kind of replacing that matrix switch switcher. So I do the same thing where everything comes into and goes out of that matrix switcher, well, now the network switch becomes that same central point. And you have to make sure, of course, that everything is 
set up to run smoothly right through that interface. And that's where we, again, we come through with making sure everything works out of the box. You turn it on, plug it in, and you'll get something through for most every installation. And then you can fine tune that as you need to. But we're back to that central core. So if that network switch is not working, as Laurent just mentioned, you have nothing. You have no audio or video, or you might have distorted audio. Uh, in digital audio, we've all been accustomed to now with Zoom calls and video the same way. Distorted audio doesn't help. Uh, it's going to make things uh, come across um, really horrible. So you got to make sure everything's working perfectly. So it, it is an incredibly complex problem, but I love how you've seen those legacy issues, especially as a guy from outside of Netgear looking in. Is What, what I love is how you're set out to find a new way forward for AV installers. So on that front, can you tell me a little bit more about why you see the M4250 as a big game changer? Because I know that's something that you're quite excited about right now, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So maybe we should uh, make a pause and um, start from the beginning, before, you know, going to these new uh, AV switchers, the AV line, the, the Netgear M4250s. Because really, when you think about it, uh, IT, as we know it, you know, this is the Ethernet world. Well, it's not new, right? I mean, it, it came live 25 years ago. I'm, I'm old enough to remember the uh, token ring and the FDDI and all these old technologies we used to do before. But, you know, 25 years ago, TCP IP came live. And, and well, it's, it's a very great technology. I can tell you because Ethernet can do virtually anything from the enterprise to the data centers to the way Facebook and Google and Amazon, they, 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 they run their business, right? And from an IT standpoint, EV, as we understand it, so transporting audio packets and video packets from a point A to a point B is a piece of cake. If you consider the big picture, you know how the Ethernet world is moving packets all day long for the past 25 years. But the problem is that what could be something easy, because after all, all AV over IP technologies rely on, you know, Ethernet standards and IEEE conventions and RFCs. Well, it is complex because the Ethernet world is too big, too large, and too cumbersome to absorb, you know, from a, from a Navy installer standpoint. So what I'm saying is that we have a double problem because IT specialists, uh, well, they don't really care about AV because, you know, that's not very often that they, they have to deal with the multicast and, and the, the quality of service that those tiny AVB streams might require, not even speaking of the time sensitive, uh, uh, techniques that you need, like PTP and all that. So IT, uh, specialists are good in the Ethernet world because they know how to do telephony, surveillance, uh, cloud, but they have at the end of the day, an application issue, right? They don't really understand the big picture for, for AV. And on the other side, you have the AV customers that are totally lost because the learning curve for them is so huge. So, well, we have understood that at Netgear, but we, I can tell you the hard way, <laughs> really much the hard way because we, we are a networking vendor, right? We, we build uh, Ethernet solutions for people to connect them. And, um, we started, you know, like always with a couple of customers who said to us, look, we would like to use your switches, but please help us. And it was a long time ago, almost 10 years ago now. And we understood that first it was not that easy because it really requires strong Ethernet platforms to, to really handle everything right. So that as John said, you don't have distortion. You, you, you have perfect video quality. The switches must be good. And also the configuration must be quite exact, you know, fastidiously exact. So we understood that and we started. I can tell you, Neil, by fixing our solutions, uh, even building, putting together new solutions, switching platforms, so that they can be efficient, reliably uh, transporting AV packets. So we did that first. Then we understood that, well, 
it was not enough. You need uh, additional levels of service and support to help AV customers to install them. And you know, Neil, it's not very scalable, right? Because you have millions, virtually millions of AV customers in the world. So we, we actually had to do something. And I'm glad I can tell you that now because I hope you will be able to, to get that. We engineered a new solution that will facilitate even more this transition for AV over IP. So this is a new platform that is, you know, really uh, convenient for AV installations with the ports in the back and a, a neat black display on the front. So really uh, good aesthetics for the AV racks. But more than that, the software inside is not anymore a nighty, obscure bunch of settings. We have come with a totally new AV interface that speaks the AV language so that the AV installer doesn't need to go to school again. You know, it's fastidious to learn about all these uh, protocols and all these settings. Instead, this interface will present the applications directly. Do you want to do AVB? Do you want to do Dante, NVX, NDI? And by just selecting the options and selecting the ports, putting some colors, I don't know, green for audio, blue for video, then the switch will work. And well, we are back to the beginning. The switch will work reliably and cost effectively. So, well, I, we believe it's it's going to be a big change because maybe, maybe if we have done it right, more customers, if not the vast majority of the system installers, they will be able now to confidently go AV over IP because IP won't be a problem anymore. It's been years that we've been discussing this and people still are reluctant. And I think this is one of the things that they've been waiting for. It's like, I know how to do a regular HDMI or HD base T system on its own, but boy, AV over IP, I'm not a network guy. I'm scared of that. And they've heard problems. They've heard horror stories from people. So now I think we're able to let them do that. At the same time, we talk about that new slick AV interface. There's still behind the scenes, all the configuration you need if you're an IT person. So the IT people own the network. And I think that's been some of the interesting discussion now is we've got to market to the IT guys to say, hey, don't worry, we're secure enough and controllable enough for you to do what you need to do on your network or make us the AV part be a separate network, that's fine. And for the AV people to let them do what they need to do as well. So we have the interface there, the command line. If you want CLI commands, no problem. Those are still there. And you can change and set up and back up everything you need to. And as well as the traditional web interface is there as well. So we haven't taken anything away. I think that's something to remember too. While these are pretty simple to set up out of the box, you still have full control. And that's been a really a good thing, I think, that reassure people that you can do what you need to do. These aren't just simplified switches. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about making that AV engineer's job that much easier. That's the main thing. And John, presumably the end result is to make everything look and sound better, right? So, so do you have any examples of how you've been able to do just that? Absolutely. You know, we have so many examples and there's some awesome ones that we'd love to tell you about. We can't mention the name. Ugh, I can describe certain companies, but but we do have something we're just about ready to publish a new case study on. And this is a great example, I think, of using our partners, leveraging our partners, as well as our engineering services team, as well as our own crack staff um, and amazing products. So there's a huge mall. Of course, malls aren't really open yet, but uh, called the American Dream. And this place is in New Jersey in the U.S. And it has it even has a ski slope in it. It's massive. So a big entertainment complex with retail and and experiences like the ski slope and other things. Well, they went to an integrator called SNA Displays who got a hold of uh, another vendor. So this is the cool part about Netgear. We work with a ton of different vendors. Uh, all these different encoders and decoders all need to run through a switch. So we partner with all these companies. One of our strong partners is Aurora Multimedia. And uh, they were involved early on and they knew that Netgear switches are some of the best and work out of the box. In fact, they're a partner of ours and they actually resell them. So they were able to bring us into this job. That's a massive job with a matrix of about, I think, 360 inputs to like 300 outputs, they told us. 
So there's 200 digital signage kiosks throughout this mall. We've all seen those walking around for wayfinding or, or for just uh, um, digital signage applications for advertising. So there's over 200 of those things around and they all have to get a signal and that's going to come from a Netgear switch. So it's been a fantastic experience for us. Our Pro AV Engineering Services team really did an awesome job trying to put all this together. It's a massive installation that's just coming online now. I think it's open, maybe not quite open to the public yet, but uh, it is coming online and it's, uh, we're really proud of that and working with our partner Aurora has been great. And uh, together, I think it makes for a great use case for this technology. And like John said a few moments ago, there, I think it's important to highlight, this is not a simplified switch. If you're the IT guy, you've got access to everything that you need too. But for the, the AV engineer, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Maybe compare the traditional legacy interface, compare with what we have on the M4250 and, and those ready-to-go profiles, depending on the AV job at hand. Because for that AV guy that's listening, that knows all about those switches, it'd be great to, to help him understand the big difference that M4250 can make to them. Let's yeah. take one of the most obvious uh, uh, audio uh, over IP technology out there called Dante. If you remember when we used to do shows, uh, run or walk throughout uh, ISE in Amsterdam or Infocom somewhere between Orlando or Las Vegas in US, uh, you see those Dante spoken signs pretty much everywhere, literally uh, thousands of, of them, right? So this is this is a very well-known uh, uh, audio over IP protocol. So because they are integrated into potentially millions of AV devices out there, you have then at least hundred thousands of customers, AV installers, who so far, you know, pretty much successfully uh, deployed Dante. Yeah. Right? Agree? We, we cannot say uh, anything else. But, so take this example. You are near uh, uh, tasked with uh, a small deployment. You need to uh, deploy, I don't know, uh, uh, 20 of those uh, AVIOs, you know, USB dongles or, or those uh, uh, encode-decode units where you plug your XLR uh, microphones in, right? With Dante. Uh, what do you do? Well, uh, you can first uh, go to the Audinate, which is the uh, Dante inventor, and uh, download their, you know, uh, white paper. Uh, this is called networking guide, right? Because Dante just published it saying, well, that's what you need to do in order to speak Dante. <laughs> so, Neil, what is in there, right? Uh, it's actually uh, not one page. It's actually a book, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> and uh, you need to you need to uh, go through it and and learn how to configure switches. So uh, take it into order. First, you need to see the Dante unit. So your switches must have the bonjour. You know this Apple MDNS uh, mm -hmm. protocol. So this is a very strange multicast, but it's a local thing, and you can traverse VLANs. It's pretty. Clever, but it's a nightmare for switches. So you need to make sure that, you know, the bonjour, the MDNS gateway and all that is all good because if not, your Dante controller is empty and then you cannot play music, right? Because you don't have any device to, 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 to work with. After the bonjour, you need to make sure that the multicast is right. So the multicast, well, you know, this is 25 year old and it's reliable, but it requires for the layer two operation, IGMP, snooping, querier, fast leave. Uh, you know, you need to make sure that the multicast traffic will be correctly handled by the switch so that one Dante source will not be uh, uh, flooded to the entire network, but just to the clients, the, the receivers that will subscribe to it, right? So multicast must be done. That's the second big thing. Third, quality of service. Oh my God. DSCP, uh, the queues, uh, the trust mode, uh, the priorities that the DSCP Q56 or 45 need to go to so that the Dante audio is prioritized, you know, uh, uh, throughout the network and making sure that the Dante, you know, takes priority, you know, if there is some kind of uh, uh, bottleneck somewhere in the network. So uh, quality of service is there. And last but not the least, you need to deal with something called PTP. 
the precision time protocol because those audio devices they need to be in sync right because if not if i would uh, capture uh, your video near or john's video and uh, have the audio separate i need to you know for the lip sync i need to i need to be able to have something in sync and the 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 time sensitive networking you have several techniques but dante leverages ptp ptp uh, must be forwarded by the switches and better uh, uh, ptp must be stamped throughout the switches so that the system knows the residency time at every hop so that the system can compensate the latency throughout the way so bonjour uh, multicast um, qs dscp queues and ptp that's what you got neil good luck with it you know what i mean <laughs> yeah even if you did it before on the switch a the next day you will have a switch b and well this is again uh, a nightmare as john said the first mission is to find where it is <laughs> into this big giant uh, system interface of some sort being a gui or a cli for those who like me uh, wants to uh, enter commands into a console and uh, well uh, not even mentioning that, you know, um, uh, I, I don't want to, to, to speak for any other brands out there in the market for switching. Just take Netgear, right? Take a Netgear product A. Over the years, even not the years, over the month, the quarters, we publish new firmware, new software revisions, new maintenance release, and we move things around, right? I mean, we, we have to, we need to keep up. And, and for you, Neil, you're back to the, to the day one all the time. This is very fastidious, super hard to standardize. When you know, on the other hand, that, well, after all, the switch in the middle is like a power strip, right? This is, this is where your cabling is going to. And that should, that should work, but it's not the case. You've got to go through this Dante uh, uh, book. So what we have done, as John said, we still have the engine, we still have the kitchen, you know, the switch ships with everything that a normal IT customer uh, would need to do anything, and in particular, any, everything that is needed for AV over IP. But we don't expose it too much in the way we are coming to the market with those switches. It's in the switch, it's in there as usual, business as usual. But instead, instead of promoting this user interface, the legacy one, we are promoting a new one that is called a Navy UI. So you will click uh, and log into the Navy UI. You're nil. You have a password because the first time you open the switch, the switch will tell you, "Hey, take, set a password." And when you're in there, you will immediately see a list of Navy templates, and it's rather fastidious list with 12 entries, but guess what is the first one? It's called Dante Audio. So that's good because Neil, you tasked with, you know, installing 20 of them. So you will click this Dante Audio template and make it a profile for you. Give it a name, assign a color to it. Personally, I like green for audio, but you can pick your own color. Tell the switch if you want to stay in the default VLAN or if your customer already got a Dante primary VLAN because usually audio over IP must be segregated, you know, encapsulated into some kind of virtual network. So maybe the VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 and you're done. So just by applying a predefined Dante audio template to ports, gives you a profile that is then specified with your ports colored in green, your VLAN ID, maybe the 20, and that's it. So as a system insel installer, that's what you are do going to do. And of course, even if you want to check, because maybe, you know, you're a little bit paranoid or you want to verify if the Dante book was correctly uh, 
follow, well, you just need to go to the kitchen, you know, and, and fire up the standard IT interface. And, you know, it's fastidious, but, you know, it's possible. You can review the multicast. You can review the, the PTP. You can review the QS, the DSCP, making sure that everything is in order. And it is because the new value proposition now is to say, well, look, this is how it works. But at some point, you don't even need to bother anymore because you can trust Netgear. You can trust Netgear for your AV jobs because we took care of that profile. We promise if anything goes uh, and anything changes with Audinate, Audinate is one of our closed partner in Australia, but they are everywhere in the world, like in Oregon, in the US, we will adapt our profiles. You know, it's it's not meant to be like that for years. We will always, always keep up so that you can trust Netgear, but you can especially trust your profile. And Neil, you should then be able to plug your Dante uh, uh, products and there should be no problem, no distortion and the, the quality should be excellent. For an AV engineer, that really does feel like a, a big, big game changer. We're going to have people listening all over the world from a variety of backgrounds and interested in Netgear products. So a, a question I've got to ask, you might not know the answer yet. Is this web GUI exclusive just to the M4250 or do you think it will be you'll see similar interfaces on future products? Well, uh, this is a lovely question. And, uh, well, it's not the first time we have this question already. Uh, during the last couple of days, we got this question a lot. So, well, I'm speaking under control of Mr. John Hankel in the uh, uh, headquarters in California. Netgear is a public company, right? So Netgear cannot comment on future products nor uh, future product enhancements. So uh, I cannot, I cannot really comment, but I would agree that it would be a good idea to expand this AV UI experience beyond the M4250's new switchers. So yes, Neil, today, as we speak, uh, this new line, the AV line of the M4250 switches that came live, uh, they ship with this user interface as a, as a secondary uh, uh, AV interface for AV customers and only them, only them. So, of course, we have a, a lot of other pro AV switches. We have the M43s, the M4500s that were so far the only tools that we at Netgear got in order to address all these concerns and facilitate this transition for AV over IP. Those guys, those switchers still have the legacy IT uh, uh, GUI. So two things about it. First, I agree that would be a good idea. We'll see. But second, now at least we have a proof of concept. If I'm a Navy installer or if you, Neil, uh, want, went successful, you know, with your 20 Dante dongles with the 4250, then you can go to the kitchen, right? You can see the multicast, the PTP, the DSCP and the um, um, all the all the settings, and then you can fire up another switch, forty three hundred switch, bigger switch, or a forty five hundred hundred gig core switch, because you now have a massive job to do, and just replicate what you're seeing. So at least you have a good proof of concept, because the forty two fifty will expose it, ready to go to be utilized on the um, other switches. But that's a good point. And uh, that's probably why uh, we are still, you know, very proud and uh, honored to uh, serve the, the AV community with a full team of pro AV engineers in this uh, pro AV design team so that we can help you, Neil. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you off there, guys, as today we are focused on the hardware aspects of AV over IP and audio over IP. But I want to invite you back on in a few days to discuss the support and service side of things. So we will return. But a big thank you to you both for sharing your insights with me today. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Now, in today's episode, we did look at the hardware side of AV over IP and audio over IP. But as I said a few moments ago, 
we will return soon with part two of this interview, where you'll also learn about the passion and determination that drives these teams to solve real problems and make a big, big difference to IT engineers, AV engineers, resellers, and all of their customers. So join me next time for part two of this conversation. 